Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Today, you will hear from Dr. David Priest, Senior Vice President and Chief Safety, Quality, and Epidemiology Officer of Novant Health. And this morning, we're also joined by Nikki Neeson, Vice President of Clinical Operations and Chief Nursing Officer for Novant Health Medical Group. Take it away, Dr. Priest. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody virtually again. I hope you were able to get some rest here at the end of the year. Uh, happy 2021. I'm going to make a few comments about our hospital capacity at Novant Health and where we are with team member vaccinations. And then Nikki's going to make some comments about our vaccination program um, as well. So in terms of hospital capacity, this is a critical time for our healthcare systems and for our communities. And while we've begun to administer the COVID vaccine, it's imperative that people understand that we are not out of the woods yet with community spread at an all time high. Starting around Christmas day, we have seen a significant increase in the percentage of COVID tests that are positive. Uh, the percentage of tests that are positive over the last rolling seven days in our organization is now approximately 25% in Winston-Salem and in our Charlotte market, and over 30% at our Novant Health facilities in Rowan County. So this reflects the significant spread of COVID across the region. Across our footprint, the number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients continues to remain high. To meet this demand during the pandemic, we've expanded our bed capacity by approximately 60%. Uh, we're also seeing the expected seasonal increase in the number of patients seeking care for their health concerns. So while today we have the necessary beds, the staffing, the personal protective equipment to care for all those who need it, we need the help of our communities to ensure this continues to be the case. Our internal modeling suggests a continued high number of hospitalized patients over the next 14 days, and we can care for those patients at present, but if additional surge is created, there will be significant challenges for local hospitals. Masking, physical distancing, and avoiding large gatherings are proven ways we can all help reduce the spread of the virus. We remind people that the virus is going to make, I'm sorry, that the vaccine is going to make a big difference, but there are not enough doses yet for everyone. So it would be tragic for someone to acquire COVID, be hospitalized with COVID, or certainly to die from COVID just a few weeks before a vaccine is available that would have prevented it. So it remains imperative that people protect themselves and their families. Staffing remains an important part of providing care to our patients and communities. With the capacity to add beds comes the need for additional clinical team members to support them. We continue to monitor the data closely and we are ready to activate additional surge planning scenarios from staffing contingency to the utilization of additional space on our campuses should we need to. At present, we are fully operational at most of our facilities at Novon Health Forsyth Medical Center and Novon Health Kernersville Medical Center. We are performing time sensitive inpatient procedures and reviewing other non time sensitive procedures to see where those can be performed. And we can move procedures and utilize our resources across multiple locations in all of our markets. Uh, in terms of our team member vaccinations, as of this morning, Novon Health had vaccinated 11,114 team members across all of our markets. That includes North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, approximately 45% of our patient facing team members have scheduled an appointment for vaccination or have received their first dose. This week, we'll begin to give the second dose to team members who were the first to get the vaccine three weeks ago. Uh, this week, our vaccine allotment is approximately 10,725 vaccine doses. 3,900 of which are new first doses and 6,825 are second doses for our team members. Uh, we've asked my colleague Nikki Neeson, the Vice President of Clinical Operations and the Chief Nursing Officer for Novant Health Medical Group to join us today to address how Novant Health is phasing in patient vaccination. So, Nikki. Thanks, David. Um, I'm here at our Matthews location. Um, so, sorry, hopefully I won't get any more interruptions. I just had a patient walk in, we got to lock the front door. So um, I'll, I will let you know that starting today, later today, we're going to do a, a test run with some some Novant Health patients here in Matthews and in our Winston location. Um, we have a very limited supply from the state, so we're limiting um, those, those um, appointments to patients that meet group 1B, group one, which is 75 and older. So we won't be open to everyone at first. Um, we're gonna stay in line with the North Carolina DHHS guidelines and, and um, you know, as those open up, we'll, we'll match that. We're thinking that we're gonna be able to administer to about, um, you know, 800 to 1,000 patients a week across our system. And then we plan to, you know, increase that number as, as allocations allow. Um, so our patients,
Snowmont Health patients will be notified. We're going to send out some messaging today um, that's got some information for them to, to be, begin to understand the different phases and groups from the state and where they may fall into that. Um, eligible patients are going to get that message through my chart. Um, if we, they don't have a my chart, we'll send out an email and then we'll send paper letters to those patients who don't have an email or a my chart account. Um, we're working quickly to stand up a 1-800 number for those patients um, to be able to access, you know, if they have questions or if they have any trouble scheduling appointments through their my chart. Um, just any questions that they have about vaccines. For those patients who believe that they're eligible based on current guidelines, but they didn't get an email from us or a my chart message, um, again, they'll, we'll have that 1-800 number on our um, website for them to, to get information that they need. Um, we're working through the details. There's a, a pretty um, stringent amount of work for patients to register um, through the CVMS portal themselves. Um, we've gone through that with iteration with team members and now we're, we're deciding if that makes sense to ask patients to register that to make their appointment a little faster. So more details are coming on um, whether we just go ahead and handle that internally or ask them to register um, ahead of time. We do know that patients are going to have a lot of questions about where they go and who they should get their vaccine with and um, how to make an appointment. Right now we are doing two centralized sites, um, one in Charlotte and one in Winston, um, and also working to stand up um, a site this week in our underserved, um, historically marginalized um, communities in both Winston and Charlotte. Uh, quickly to follow, we expect to be able to apply for um, access with the with the state to have other clinics um, within Rowan, Brunswick and the Triangle um, and then other sites in Charlotte to be able to, to administer vaccine. Um, so we expect to be able to submit that to the state on January 11th and hopefully quickly after that begin to get allocation for those sites too so that ultimately we can um, administer to more patients. We do have a weekly call with um, both Mecklenburg and um, Forsyth to health departments to align the, the big systems with the work that the health department's doing and make sure that we um, just get the biggest swath of patients that we can and not, um, you know, message to the same patients. So we know it's going to be confusing for patients. We're going to send over our um, information to the health department on what we're messaging so that they can share that same language when patients call them and are a Novant Health patient. Um, we know that there's a high demand for COVID-19 vaccine and we're just asking that the community, um, you know, be patient with us as we work through the details and work through the allocation. We want um, general information about vaccine process and our, the, our communities can visit our novanthealth.org uh, backslash COVID vaccine website. And that really is gonna be a, a good source of information for them um, to, to get their questions answered. Um, and as I said, we should have that toll free number up in the next few hours on that same website and we'll be sending that out with communications too, so that people can get their questions answered once they've reviewed that website and still feel like their questions weren't answered or they don't have access to to that website. Um, so we appreciate media's partnership and messaging, you know, that we can only give out as much vaccine as, as is allocated to us. And we know that it's going to create some anxiety for patients as they wait. Um, we are going to attempt to open as many appointments as we feel safely that we can um, based on our minimum allocation. And then we plan to revisit every every Monday evening what we get from the state and, um, and, and add appointments as we're available. Um, I think that's uh, all of my report. So I'll turn it back over to Samantha or um, Megan. Thank you, Nikki. All right, the first question is from the Charlotte Business Journal. Hi there, this is Caroline Hudson. Um, I'm just curious, uh, Nikki, this might be a question for you. I mean, do you have any sense for what the uh, vaccine allocations will look like going through the rest of January and into February? I mean, are you expecting, you know, a significant ramp up, for example, and how many you're actually allocated? We're hopeful that we'll see an, uh, an a significant ramp up, but it's, it you know, more question marks, I think, than answers. David, do you have any additional insight into that? 
Yeah, so there will not be a significant ramp up in the month of January based on what we're being told from the state. So our allotment will be pretty consistent week to week through the month of January. I have not heard anything yet on what February will look like. Thank you. Next question is from WBTV. Hi. Um, yes. So as far as moving on to 1B, is this, you know, particularly going to be for Novant Health patients or how do you determine who's going to get a 1B um, vaccine from Novant or through their local health department? I know in Mecklenburg County, they're starting uh, to um, get some people on their list there. So kind of how do people know where to go? That's a really great question. So I think it's going to be confusing for the community. Um, and that's why Atrium, Novant, um, Wake, you know, the health departments for Scythe and Mecklenburg, we have those weekly touch bases to try to make sure our communications as clear as possible. But um, the strategy is going to be for Atrium uh, and Wake to, to vaccinate their own patients and team members and um, Novant will follow suit along with Atrium. And then the health department's really going to be the net for any of those patients that are unattached um, from the systems or, you know, essential workers that are unattached from big systems. That's what the health department's going to, you know, focus on. And then for people who are in 1B, group one, so anyone 75 and up, do, if they're a Novant patient, do they go to Novant versus going to the health department? Yeah, so that's a great question. That's what we're asking. I, I, you know, they won't, I don't believe they'll be turned away from the health department, but just based on those allocations, it's important that we try to message to Novant patients, come to Novant. Um, we, we're working quickly to get appointments to help decrease the anxiety, even though they may not get their, their vaccine this week, we want to be able to offer them an appointment and understanding of when they, they would be able to get in to get that vaccine. Um, so yes, Novant patients, we want to come to Novant and other systems want their patients to come to them and really leave the health department vaccinations for those that are unattached uh, to a, a large health system. And are you starting to make appointments for 1B patients, which you know when you'll start actually being able to start administering to them? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we are actually planning to do a test run this afternoon from one to three um, with a small group of patients um, in both Charlotte and Winston, just to make sure as we open those clinics up to hundreds of patients a day that we have the process down and, and it's solid. Um, so those are going to start today. Those appointments have been made. We have a few appointments through the next couple of days, but we're going to start um, once we send out that messaging to patients, we're going to start really ramping up for this week um, and appointments will be open starting, you know, 8, 8 a.m. in the morning. We're looking at hours 8 to 5 right now just because there's not um, enough volume to warrant, there's not enough volume of vaccine to warrant long longer hours or weekend hours, but we'll evaluate that. And as that allocation increases, we'll um, increase our hours to match. Thank you, Nikki. Next question is from WCNC. Hi, first, just to clarify. So are you accepting appointments starting today? So we're rapidly running at having those templates available. And when we send that message out to patients, so group 1B, there's three phases in there and we're really focusing on phase one, 75 and older. So we've identified the patients in Novant Health that are 75 and older, and we'll be sending them a direct message through my chart, through their email. And if they don't have either of those, they'll get a paper letter. Um, and that will be today. We'll start that. And so, yes, once that goes out, I'm not sure the exact time today that will happen, but they will be able to make an appointment after that. Okay. And then one more thing. I know we're focusing on group one, but looking ahead to frontline workers, is that something that they also should be looking to their healthcare provider on information on where to get vaccinated or should they be relying maybe on their employer? I think that would depend on their employer. If they have a large employer who has a plan, then certainly that's that's a great thing for them to be able to access. I would I would think that most essential workers won't have um, a process like that with with their employer. Um, and so those again, the same messaging uh, would be if you're connected to a large system, reach out to your system, and you'll get be getting information from your system on how to schedule your vaccine. And if you're not attached to them, then again, the health department's the net for all those patients that don't have an attachment to a system. 
whether they're essential workers or 75 or older, or as we move into the chronic disease phases, um, that would be the same messaging. Next question is from WFMY. Hi there, this is Grace Holland with WFMY News 2. Um, my question is about testing. Um, I apologize if this has already been covered. I had to step out for a second. Um, but we're hearing that it's hard to get rapid tests right now. A lot of people are having to get the tests um, that take a few more days to come back. Um, is that the case? And, and what's the best way for people to deal with that? Um, well, Dave, you want to take that as far as from a scientific perspective on rapid versus send off? Yeah, so we, we've uh, had to deal with this really from the beginning of the pandemic, and we use a variety of platforms in order to um, test individuals. Uh, those platforms are limited by supply often um, and location where they can be stored. So um, because of the very high volumes, uh, every I think every healthcare system I'm in communication with and every laboratory are running as fast as they can with all the testing they have to do. Um, so there will be times when some of the tests that have more rapid turnaround times um, are not available and they have to be sent to a, a laboratory that may take a couple of days. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to all those kinds of testing platforms. Um, so we are always strategizing on adding additional testing platforms and making sure our allotment of tests is good. And right now our allotment of tests is good. So our turnaround times and our partnerships with other laboratories uh, is not, the, the turnaround times have not been long. Um, it may take a day or two um, if we don't have the rapid testing available at that time based on supply. Yeah, and just to add on to that, our larger um, screening sites are outdoors um, and the, the, the point of care testing is not stable in, in that kind of weather. The humidity affects it, the temperature affects it, so we, we, we don't have that available at those sites. But um, our Go Health partners and all of our community medicine um, and pediatric partners, for the most part, um, were able to have that that platform in their clinic as we learned how to take care of respiratory illness um, in all of our clinics. Um, so attached Novant Health patients should reach out to their clinic to understand better. At the end of the day, um, the providers will, you know, evaluate the patient and see if that's an appropriate testing modality for that patient. And if it is, they would proceed with that. But patients should, um, you know, clarify that with their clinic if that's, a, if that's something available for them. Next question is from WXII. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Leon from WXII. I'm, I'm curious if following the surge that we saw at Thanksgiving, did it, was there any opportunity to really do anything about the numbers starting to go up or did it feel more so like we're in the entire holiday surge? Were you able to make any changes as we started to see the numbers go up following the first of the three holidays? And if not, um, how frustrating is that to just sort of feel like you had to ride out an entire holiday season? I don't, I think that makes sense. Yeah, so um, we, we knew what was coming and that's why we've continued to expand our capacity and, and, and our uh, staffing to ensure we can care for those patients. I mean, one of the challenges obviously in public health is uh, the public, right? So the public health infrastructure in the United States is, is small, a very dedicated group of people, uh, and they try to message what's best practice out to the public, but it's really important for members of the public um, to listen to that message and and try to do what, what's being suggested so that we can reduce the surge. So we, we knew that, that there was a general fatigue around COVID, uh, in our communities, and we knew that would lead people to maybe not adhere very strictly to what is uh, suggested from public health officials. Uh, and so we had to prepare accordingly. Um, and certainly that's a frustrating thing for our healthcare providers. We also understand it's a frustrating thing for the public. Um, but we, we knew that was coming and, and that's we're still in that wave now. I mean, we've had days that are much higher numbers of positive tests than there were even at the peaks in, in June. So. Um, we're, we're just prepared to care for our communities and continue to do so. Next question is from the Winston-Salem Journal. Yeah, so this is Richard Craver with the Winston-Salem Journal. Just sort of following up on the last question, 
you're right about the surge in numbers, especially the ones that got into the 9,300, 9,500 category. I guess the first question is, for the anomalies in, in terms of how the data was collected or did we really have that level of a surge? And then on the back side of that, the numbers have come down in the 5,300, 6,300 range in the last two or three days. So is there a sense that we, we may have hit the peak of the holiday surge or is that still to come? Yeah, that's a good question. That's still to come. So we, we run internal modeling and our model for the next 14 days has flattened a bit in Winston-Salem and it continues to rise in Charlotte. So those models are not perfect. You know, healthcare systems around the country have wrestled with this issue for 10 months. And how do you how do you prepare for surges um, and, and how do you uh, model and put all the data points in necessary in order to get an accurate prediction of what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. So uh, it can change day to day. Um, I don't believe we've quite reached the peak. I hope that's true. Uh, there's, like I said, a little bit of flattening in Winston-Salem right now, and it's continued to rise in Charlotte. Uh, I think um, there certainly were enough um, gatherings, social gatherings over the last both Christmas and New Year's to suggest that we're still a couple of weeks from the peak. Uh, I mean, New Year's was just five days ago, four days ago. So any gatherings that occurred there where the virus was spread, we're just now on the front end of when those cases would be detected or patients would develop symptoms. So uh, we, we believe that January is gonna be a rough month across the region for our healthcare providers. Um, and uh, our opinion on that has not changed. And I guess a follow-up question when you're talking about doing the applications and getting people to make appointments for the vaccine, um, I know of just from covering what the Fatah County Health Department did, they were basically overwhelmed with numbers of people trying to call in to the point it became a, a pretty high level of frustration in terms of not getting through. Uh, do y'all have any idea or any plans to try to do something online in terms of appointments or is that possible in, the, in that quick of a turnaround? Yeah, that's a great question. So let me just take this moment to reiterate, we need patients to wait. We are gonna contact them when we have vaccine for them and they meet criteria. So if you didn't hear anything else I said today, please let them, you know, publish that we are gonna reach out to them, that we know what phase they're in and we have to match that up with the vaccine that we have. But yes, we have um, a, me a method that we've used with team members that works really well called a scheduling ticket that you can send in Epic through my chart um, is one way. And then we're also exploring um, for those that don't have my chart, is there a way to do that through the web? That'll take a little bit longer, but we are looking to see how we can make that easier. Um, we know that we have um, a lot of patients that are 75 and older and only about 50% of them have a my chart, which is not un unlike many other populations. So we wouldn't assume that just because they're 75, they're not, you know, tech, tech savvy enough and don't want that opportunity to make that appointment electronically. All right, thank you. Next question is from Axios. Hi, this is Katie Peralta from Axios Charlotte. Um, I had a question um, for either one of you, either uh, Nikki or Dr. Uh, Priest. Um, I, I completely understand how, you know, Novant is going to contact patients when there is vaccine available for them. But looking ahead to people um, in the frontline essential workers group, you know, folks like grocery store clerks, for instance, um, usually these individuals are hourly workers who don't get health care through their employer. How will Novant communicate to these people? How, how will the healthcare system know what it is they do? Will they have to present some sort of, you know, proof that they are, you know, a cashier at Harris Teeter or something like that um, when it is time for them to get their vaccine? I think that's a really great question. And that's why it's been so important that Novant stays connected with our health departments and other large systems. We want to kind of have a, um, you know, community message that we're sharing. And as of right now, we, we don't expect to have to have any proof that you're in that that work group by you know showing your badge or having a letter we're not really trying to put any more barriers in the way of those folks getting this vaccine um, so i think the answer to that would be um, we don't have a perfect strategy on that we'll just have to communicate through many channels you guys our website direct messages to our patients via email and um, 
my chart that if they fall into that group, what, what their next steps should be. So I think that's a great question. I don't have all the answers to, but it's a known question, you know, it's a known question mark. And it will probably be that we would message broadly to all of our patients and, and, and give them instructions on what to do if they fall into those categories. More details on what that means for an essential worker. I think is, is one of the things that we're going to ask the state to help tease out for us so that, again, the health departments um, and the large systems are all kind of sharing the same messaging and, and that we are able to capture our patients and the health department has the ability to capture those that are unattached. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Additionally, um, the vaccine is no charge. Uh, we will charge an administration fee that helps to uh, somewhat, not not completely, but somewhat cover the cost of the nursing and pharmacy teams that work to, to make that a safe um, administration. Uh, but any patients that don't have insurance that will go to the CARES Act, much like the testing does now. And then the, the, any other patients that are insured, it would go to their insurance and we don't expect a co-insurance at this point. So it would be nothing out of pocket to them, no barrier there. Next question is from Hannah with the Charlotte Observer. Hey there, uh, Dr. Priest, I wanted to follow up on some of the holiday hospitalization questions. Um, can you say at this point that we are seeing hospitalizations related to Christmas? Um, and I, I know you said we're just at the beginning of the New Year's. When do you think that we'll be able to see the full effect of both of those holidays? Yeah, so in general, when after someone's been exposed to COVID, if they become symptomatic, that takes four or five days. I, I would think of all of these uh, events where people interact with each other as like dropping a pebble in a lake, uh, and then all the ripple effect occurs, right? So if a, there was a gathering, say, on Christmas Day, the pebble got dropped in the lake, a group of people there were now exposed four to five days later, they have symptoms, but even before that, potentially they're spreading virus and then they're with other people and they're with other people. You get this effect that can drag on for a number of weeks. So um, our, our hope is that um, by the end of January, we would see some decline in, in that movement of cases from the holidays. But again, it depends on, on how the public is interacting and, and whether they're socially, staying socially distant and what other activities they're participating in. So um, we, we, you know, again, New Year's Day was four days ago. Um, so we would, if you were at a gathering on, on New Year's Day and you were exposed to COVID, uh, you would only now be potentially developing symptoms and that could go on the, to, for a couple of weeks um, in terms of your risk of developing symptoms. So we're, we're probably a few weeks from the post holiday peak. And the last question is from WBTV. Thank you. Um, we had a viewer reach out to us saying that they are um, seniors living in York County, South Carolina, but their physician is a North Carolina doctor. Should they get vaccinated in the county that they're living in or where they have a doctor? They said their doctor doesn't know. <sighs> That's a good question. I think uh, we had a lot of question marks around county, around South Carolina border um, for our team members. And I, and I don't know that we have all the answers to that, but we're working pretty quickly to figure those out. It really comes down to, we wanna get that patient taken care of um, and decrease their anxiety. But at the same time, we wanna keep the state allocations as clean as possible so that, you know, South Carolina can get enough vaccine for all of their communities in North Carolina can do the same. Um, so I think we'll we'll have more answers on that coming. David, do you have a, another response for that? I don't. And we had this issue with our practices in South Carolina and where the team members lived as we worked through the team member process. So there are some unique things. And as you know, the states some, can sometimes take different approaches as to who's in what phase. And so we, we've wrestled with that as well. My advice would be, if, no matter where you have the opportunity to get vaccine, you get it. Um, and it would depend on the local health department in that county if they're immunizing uh, individuals in a phase and they live in the county and the practices in North Carolina would go ahead and get it in the county. So we will work through some of those logistics. Um, but we, as with all of these things, we know their phases, but as Nikki mentioned, our goal is to get as many people immunized as quickly as possible and we'll continue to work through those issues. 
Thanks. And just a quick follow up. If someone lives in like Gaston County, let's say, uh, should they get it through like the health department or if they have, I know there are like some physician little offices for Novant in Gaston County. Should they be contacting Novant for that or relying on the health department since there isn't a Novant main hospital there? Yeah, so the, the, it, it's not really based on the hospital. At this point, it is attachment to our medical group at Novant. So any patients, no matter what their county they live in, Novant will be reaching out to them um, when it's time for their phase. Um, there are a lot of practices there that are Caremont practices. So again, Caremont would reach out to their patients. Novant would reach out to their patients. And and, and that's, that's how that would work um, if they're in phase you know, 75 and older, Novant's going to reach out to them regardless of what county they live in. All right. Thank you, everyone. We will have our next briefing this Friday at 930 a.m.